India's indigenous multi-barrel rocket launcher system, the Pinaka, has been attracting some global interest lately. The French army says it's evaluating the Pinaka for potential use. Why is this significant and what's the rocket science behind it? Joining me are three experts who've watched this system very closely. In fact, they've played a very crucial role in inducting this system, developing it for the Indian military. Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, former DG Artillery, Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni, former DG Infantry, and my friend Rahul Chaudhary, former CEO, Tata Power SED, the company that made the first Pinaka launchers for India. Gentlemen, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. 25 years, just 10 regiments of Pinaka for the Indian Army. The French want it, the Armenians want it, but why is India so... Uh, giving the Pinaka such stepmotherly treatment, uh, General Ravi Shankar? It's a million dollar question. You should ask the Indian Army and some of the planners of the Indian Army. Because originally we were supposed to have 22 regiments. Yes. Uh, and I, I'll come up uh, up front. A few short-sighted uh, people felt that right. we don't need that kind of firepower. This was at a time when we, we felt that wars won't take place or wars will be short and uh, you know, firepower like Pinaka will not be needed. Oh, wars of attrition then, are a thing of the past as one of your colleagues past, once we, told me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then they all of a sudden, you know, unilaterally a few uh, people in the army headquarters took this uh, decision right. uh, to cut the number of Pinaka regiments from 22 to 10. Yes. But I think in, you know, as uh, things evolve, uh, we will have to go back on that and I'm sure we will go back to those 22 regiments in due course of time. Right. Because if you don't have firepower today, uh, you're going to suffer and that's what we've learned for the past four years. Absolutely. If you don't have firepower, you're going to suffer and that's what we've learned in the past couple of years. But uh, General Kulkarni, you know, uh, as uh, General Ravi Shankar mentioned, the fact that we had a projected a requirement for 22 regiments of the Pinaka, we only have 10 regiments. And now we have the Russia-Ukraine war, which is possibly one of the longest battles of attrition post the Korean war at least, where we've seen firepower being used on a full scale, like artillery and rockets and, uh, you know, uh, MBRLs and uh, the, the US uh, HIMARS and all of this coming back to, uh, you know, uh, haunt us. Do you believe that these uh, interest in the legacy land systems that we thought were obsolete, like rocket systems and artillery, it's a direct fallout of the Russia-Ukraine war? Uh, thank you, Sandeep. You have experts uh, on the panel and could be better. Let me tell you as an infantryman, what is it that I'm looking for? And the success of Pinaka was basically Kargil. Yes. You know, when they came into the direct firing role and the way they hit. Absolutely. And the entire, you know, the RT winning is attributed primarily, of course, to the infantry yes. having captured or having boots and rods, but to the right. artillery to make it possible. Yes. And that is where everything revolves around. And subsequently in Armenia, where Armenians also, you saw Azerbaijanis, the way the Azerbaijanis you know, kept on uh, sort of protesting as to why the Indians giving it to Armenia. Yes. Because that's where again the battle turned. Now in the uh, Russia, Ukraine, you find again multi barrel rocket yes. launchers. The kind of Himars that were given that you referred to yes. by the Americans to the Ukrainians, just four of them to begin with. And the number of targets that they took on and the kind of problems they put. You know, uh, the Russian problems increased primarily yes. once the Himal got included. You found that subsequently 40 more the Americans decided to give it to the Ukrainians. Right. So th there is no denying the fact that this rocket system, which every rocket, imagine the speed, yeah, five times the speed of sound. Yes. Five times the speed of sound. That's the kind of thing. And almost the number of rockets that get fired in just about 44 seconds. So right. all of it. And it's very important for the infantry because when your infantry wants to capture the ground, how yes. does it capture the ground until unless it is softened? And right. softening is done by artillery. By, by artillery. Quick, rapid fire. Yes. And that is where demoralizes the enemy. And before they even decide to lift their heads up, that's yes. where we are. And right. That is where it's important. That's where yes. uh, it's really important. And, uh, you know, thank you, General Kulkarni, for highlighting the fact that it was actually the Kargil war that saw the debut of the Pinaka, where the first time we saw the enemy, uh, you know, being shocked and awed by this indigenous system. But that was 25 years ago and we're still at 10 regiments. And I'm going to ask 
Rahul Chaudhary this. He's a man who's been behind the system for the last 25 years or so. Uh, Rahul, tell us about why it's taken us so long to realize the Pinaka, uh, you know, the importance of the Pinaka rocket system. I recall you telling me this about a decade ago that the Pinaka was one of the few systems that were completely indigenous, uh, indigenously designed, developed and manufactured. And if we wanted to export it, we didn't need to look at a second or a third country for permissions. Rahul. Look, the can I, can I uh, narrate a story to you? Yes, absolutely, Rahul. If it's an interesting one, we are all ears. This is the year 2009, 8 or 9. There is an ADG artillery. Yes. And we are facing a problem because right. of the Tatra truck controversy yes. on Pinaka. Right. Uh, the answer was that let's try and do and develop something on a Tata truck. Right. Six by six. Uh, and uh, uh, try and move this damn thing forward. Uh, obviously, this was not a DRDO funded project, but I put my money onto it. Right. We created the, 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 the Pinaka. Right. And one of the things which I, unfortunately, having been trained in multinationals, right. uh, I look at a systems approach. Yes. And when I studied Pinaka compared to the systems and HIMARS was just coming in. Yes. One of the things I realized was how antiquated the loading system of the rockets was. Right. I mean, it's... Physically, you are just for 45 minutes, you, you need to load the parts. Right. And HIMARS did it in less than two and a half minutes. Right. So, like an idiot, I said, okay, I will develop a crane. Right. We were the launcher manufacturers and there was a crane required, which was being brought from the OEM called PEML right. and they were getting it from Tractors India and it was just a crane. Right. Uh, I went there, I had a discussion with the ADG and he said, okay, try and get this one forward. At that point of time, I thought that we are creating a solution which makes sense and therefore it will be accepted but i did not realize the fact that i was not the ahsp of pinaka right ahsp of pinaka was the dgqa right because that is how that goddamn thing works yes. if you are an indian company even if you are do you are the oem you are not the dg right and uh, second thing is because it was a repeat order nothing could be changed the next two regiments for a repeat order of the first two regiments. Therefore, nothing can be changed. And because nothing can be changed, you have to go with the old kind of, uh, um, I mean, everything old. The, everything. the specifications are the old uh, uh, spe oh, absolutely, specs. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Now, no deviation from. Unfortunately, at that time, at that time, the gentleman had yes. moved out of the artillery headquarters. Right. Uh, with whom I had done the first discussion and, and brought in and I, and at the end of the day we were a commercial company I said, are, 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 are. Right, right. Uh, the second thing I also realized was that the most critical piece in artillery with all said and done is the INS, yes. inertial navigation system and right. Pinaka has a French one called the Sigma 30. Right. If this has to become an uh, global supply chain uh, piece. Yes. We French do not sell in the world. Americans do. Right. And if we have to do that, I have to find a way of bringing in the American system, which right. was the uh, um, uh, which was from Honeywell. Right. And I started working on that. Uh, I started working on that with ARD. I started working on that, that with the uh, with the uh, with the armed forces, and we got to a stage where 
with american i, I given that i had a reputation that i was very soft on america right, right. and americans liked me i was able to twist twist their arm and you not only get the uh, right. technology transfer commitments which was that uh, but also capital goods which is sidereal table which is something which very very difficult to get out of the event hmm. unfortunately in india we don't understand military industrial complex right and the most critical piece is the capital goods right if you do not have access on capital goods and somebody controls those capital goods you will never be able to make this whole yes damage. yes absolutely so uh, uh, you know rahul uh, give me half a minute more yes and yes. i will tell you another uh, the, the conclusion part of this story right even even after losing that uh, deal we still upgraded the pinaka and right. wanted to give give the the next two regiments which were coming in with a modern pinaka which would have then be easily upgraded to the right, right. and we were we were losing about 2, 2 crores of rupees in doing that right uh it was agreed with the deeds and dg artillery that we will do it free of cost right but unfortunately the dg moved out and the next person who came said no i do not want anything right and also at that point of time government had a scheme saying that oems can become their own certifying agencies for quality and right. everything else yes and i had created the entire database and everything else and artillery had supported me that pinaka would be the first system to go into production yes. with our man our uh, with QA, your specifications uh, right. yes right absolutely rahul yes. your point is well what? made yes yes you know oh, but i, I want to bring in speech. i want to bring in general ravi shankar in on this uh, you know uh, general ravi shankar rahul has made that point about how you know industry has really struggled with this system we've had this we have proven this system 25 years back and even now even till date induction is so slow it's uh, you know moving at a sma- snail pace we are ordering regiments like one regiment two regiments three regiments what is it that we need to do now given that there is so much of global interest in the system the french are looking at it the armenians already have it possibly several other countries could be looking at it what is the kind of uh, push that this needs the system needs from the private sector from uh, you know come a defense industrial complex uh, like uh, rahul choudhry for instance that can make the pinaka more attractive uh, for uh, global uh, you know armies of the world yeah look uh Sandeep, I'd like to set a few issues in the correct perspective. Uh, first and foremost, Pinakas were not ready when Kargil happened. In right. fact, they were not deployed there. Right. Okay, let's get that straight. We used Grad BM twenty one in direct firing role yes. in Pinak uh, in uh, Kargil. Okay. Right. And Bofors. The first Pinaka regiment was inducted in two thousand and ten. right not before that and i'm sure because i was the goc of the rt div which inducted right. that and did the first operational firing right it is a very good piece of equipment and i still feel it's one of the best equipment which we have brought out that's the first thing the second thing is uh, my association i would like to put the thing in perspective because both general kolkarni and general mr rahul choudhry have put in certain perspectives which are yes. not exactly correct right my association with uh, this uh, equipment right goes back to the time when it was initially conceived in 1998 right it was part of prithvi and pinaka right so the development took place a long time it's not right. it's not that you know at at the turn of the century that we had this equipment ready right it was but it was it was fired in the that, kargil war no no, uh, no, no wait wait, yes. wait no it was not it was not right it was not hmm. it was not it was not deployed at tall and kargil so right. we should not be wrong in what we tell anyone uh, in public also right right it was in as a turn of the century that lnt and tatas were brought into the picture right as a conscious decision to 
uh, you know get the private se- uh, sector on board yes right and then ard continued with the development hmm. it was not until 2005 2006 that we started to, the first trials of the pinaka right right and around 2008 we did almost the final trials and the first set of operational equipment entered in 2010 right and i am very clear about it because i did the first firing of right. operationalization and that was for the first two regiments each one regiment by tatas and one yes. regiment by lnt right right and all these were mounted on the tatra trucks yes okay and like what mr rahul choudhary said the, the for the second and the third regiment it was a repeat order right now if it is a repeat order it has to be the same configuration this was right. the time when the tatra scandal broke out yes, yes and we tried our best to change the mount right and it was bureaucratically not acceptable nor was it politically acceptable that you today midstream change the configuration of the vehicle yes. get a new vehicle from somewhere and put everything together right and it didn't go through ultimately the the second and the third regiment were ordered i mean the third and the fourth regiment were ordered right only when the ban on the tatras were lifted hmm. and then we have put in an order for six regiments yes it's not one by one six regiments for 10 originally the whole story was first get two regiments then yes. two regiments and then for each plan we were to get six regiments each right right absolutely so like incremental earlier, addition general shankar yeah, i'm sorry we are not, running out of time but if you could just yeah. give us the the, uh, the the big picture about the pushing it for defense exports uh, you know which is what yeah. we're looking at how do you make it more attractive yeah. now for the uh, foreign uh, defense market look the, you don't have to make this more attractive than what it is because it's a damn good piece of equipment right and further when initially when we conceived this equipment it had yes. just about 40 kilometers of range yes today the guided pinaka has 80 kilometers of range and right. it is absolutely uh, at on par with right. the uh, you know what's that high mars right right if you so it's there it's there and everyone wants it for that reason it's only. there uh, i'm going and to bring in uh, i'm afraid uh, general ravi shankar we're completely out of time i'm going to bring in general uh, kulkarni for closing comments here general kulkarni you just heard it from uh, general ravi shankar the man who has been behind the project for since 1988 and he set a number of things right uh, we'll come back to him on this point in a later show but you know for now just tell us the uh, progress that the pinaka has made from 40 kilometers has gone to 80 and there are enhanced rockets of over 100 kilometers what do you see that needs to be done now to really push this system to you know put it on par with say the himars which is like a calling card for the american mic general kulkarni yeah so the just like what is a precision guided you know basically is like like himars has 69 it yes. goes on 150 300 400 plus uh, yes. kilometer similarly this one like what jal shankar said 38 to begin with then moved on to 69 now wanting to move to 100 there up to right. 120 km uh, and there subsequently up to 300 km uh, as it goes by now all this does help like right. what you uh, is absolutely right when he talks about cargill but it is the grads which allowed us that this multiple barrel long, uh, right. launcher these are ones that can be a game changer yes. and that this uh, the way the kind of rockets are fired and in just imagine in 44 second 12 rockets being fired it's yes. a huge thing it's a big thing you know they demoralizes the enemy it right. totally pulverizes and now right. with 1000 uh, okay. meters the 800 meters that's the kind of uh, an area that is yes. actually you know pulverizes that is what counts the most absolutely. and he's absolutely uh, right i go yes. along with shankar uh, yeah. uh, general kalkarni uh, sorry uh, completely out of time here but we are just talking about how pinaka has become uh, india's export firepower trump card uh, of course this is the system that's uh, you know except for a couple of components is primarily indigenously designed developed and manufactured and this has attracted great interest from uh, global armies and who knows this could be india's calling card for india's indigenously designed developed and manufactured system thank you very much for joining us generals kulkarni general ravi shankar and of course my friend rahul roy chaudhary